Hello everyone and welcome to The Other Half, where we talk about the other half, that's us women, as they approach the start of the back half of their career. My name's Wendy Parrish. Um, I don't know if you've been able to check any of the other videos, but this is a series where I catch up with some of the fabulous women that I've been lucky to cross paths with in life to get advice and perspective on their career and how they're planning for this second half. Um, a few things, as always, before we get started. We are live, so feel free to ask any questions. Here, I'm going to try to pull it up here so I can see any questions um, that you might have, and we'll try to get to those as, as we go. And, um, and then if you don't want to miss any episodes, please uh, connect with me on LinkedIn so you'll get notifications when I'm going live. Um, I'm so excited about today's guest. Uh, this is one of my oldest, oldest, dearest friends, um, and she's so busy, so I'm, I'm so flattered she's taken time to um, meet with us. Uh, her name is Whitney Panel, and she is one of the most creative, hardest working, and fearless people I know. She was always very ahead of the curve when it comes to trends. And I am so, so excited to have her on the show. Welcome, Whitney. Thank you oh, for having me. I had you on mute. I'm so sorry. Oh, it does say Parnell. Parnell. Oh, my gosh. Well, let, we can fix think. that. Thank you. I think you That's know what? Right. I kept like uh, auto correcting it to because that was happening in the um, post description. Look, we're fixing that up. Parnell. Parnell, Whitney Parnell. <laughs> can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you great. Thank you so awesome. much for being here. And I'm sorry I'm in my car. It's not exactly how I wanted to be, but I literally just left showing a house and um, I have two offers going for two sets of clients, both in multiple offer situations. So I was like, <laughs> I got to do it whenever I can. So I logged in and I'm glad you know that you... I always interview. think of you as a make it happen person, Whitney. Look at you making it happen. Multitask. <laughs> they say queen of multitasking. <laughs> queen of multitasking. Well, can you just start off the show by telling us about yourself and your sure. profession? Well, yes. Well, Wendy and I went to elementary school together years ago at Lexington School. So we have known each other for many years. And, um, Wendy could probably attest to the fact that I've always been kind of a um, entrepreneur and I started out selling hair barrettes that I made in uh, college. They were little trouble dolls. They were trouble dolls on a barrette and I was selling them to my sorority sisters and it was a cottage industry business and they did really, really well. And I had my mother and her friends and my sorority sisters all working for me and I was in over 400 stores throughout the country. I took a year off from school at the University of Alabama and I drove across country selling my hair barrettes um, all across the country and then landed in Los Angeles, lived there for a year. Again, selling my product while working in the film industry. Came back to University of Kentucky, finished at UK, then moved to Vancouver, British Columbia to get into a candle business. So I was a sales rep for an um, international candle company while living in Vancouver, British Columbia. So I, um, I finished college. Then my parents were like, Whitney, you've traveled the globe and everything. It's time for you to settle down and just get into real estate like your family and your father um, has have done for many years. So I chose my path in real estate. Yeah. You know what? I totally forgot about your barrettes. And now that you say it, I, I 100% and I think I still have my candles I bought from you. Somewhere. Oh, yes. Remember those <laughs> candles? Those are cool. They so, were so cool. Well, you put kind of been into, um, you know, just the whole self starter and, and making my own way and um, real estate. I've been around it my entire life. So I'm I just feel, figured that if you're going to sell something, you might as well sell the biggest thing you can sell. And I've always liked being around different types of people and um, kind of came by it naturally. So that's how I got involved. Can you hold on one second? I'm just going to send of this course, offer. Of course, of <laughs> course. Because yeah. we're in a multiple offer and I've got to just, I can do it all from my phone, which is so great. And 
years ago, I literally used to have to just run around town and then we'd fax it and then meet the seller and present offers. So now literally I can just go right uh, down the thing, right on my phone, send everything my clients just signed. And then I um, send it from my phone and then I text the agent and I make sure that they got the offer because in a multiple offer situation, it could get kind of crazy. So I'm sending all that and the escalation clause and boom. I kind of feel like this is like selling Sunset on LinkedIn Live. Uh, Yes, probably is, I guess. (laughs) Yes, crazy. So um, anyway, but I'm sorry. That's I've guess. No, no, no. Make sure you put the right numbers in and things. I don't want to mess you up. No, my people wouldn't be happy if I was not (laughs) taking care of them first. So I've always tried to take care of my clients first. So anyway. Um, and that's, you know, I've been in real estate for 27 years. It's definitely a market like no other. Um, it's, it's insane and you've got to be available all the time. My phone goes off all hours of the day and night, literally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so that was leading to my first question because I do feel like, um, some of my friends that are sort of in my age sort of think, oh, maybe I should go into real estate. Maybe I should go into real estate. Um, but they've never done it before. So if, if what would be your advice uh, for people that are thinking about going into real estate for the first time? Sure. And I have some friends of mine that are actually have been talking to me about that and thinking about it. And I think it's a great time for real estate. It's, um, you know, you can, you can make your own hours if you want. Uh, a lot of times people say, well, I'm only going to work, you know, on the, on the weekends or whatever. Um, you kind of do have to be available. So it is a perfect career for someone that maybe has kids away at school now and they can work as hard as you want to work or as little as you want to work. So I think I'm kind of a workaholic, so I'm probably working around the clock, but I enjoy what I do. I wouldn't do what I do if I didn't just absolutely love it. Yeah. 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 So I think it's now's a great time to pursue a new career if, if you choose to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. That sounds awesome. Um, so you've been a realtor for a long, for I, I don't even know how many 27, years. But 27 years. 27 years. Oh my gosh. That's, I mean, that's so amazing. Um, and, and, I, I, and you sort of coached me into getting into real estate for three I know. years. I know. That's um, awesome. But I'll tell you, having done it, it takes a lot of bravery to work for yourself like that and not have a salary and just live off commissions. Um, Mm -hmm. Do you have advice for others about being brave and how to maybe do some scary things? So if you do choose to go into real estate and I, I meet with several new agents every once in a while, they'll call me and they'll be like, I'm really thinking about getting into this. And what is your advice? Um, And my advice is you really do need, don't quit your day day job yet because you, when I got in 27 years ago, I didn't sell any homes for the first six months, meaning I had no income for the first six months. So you can't expect to get into real estate and immediately make your first sale because it it has to do with a lot of, you know, laying the foundation and and working your database and letting everyone know that you sell real estate. So, and those people may not be in the market for a house right then, but you want them to think of you when the time does come to sell their home or buy a home. So, you know, I think that people can get discouraged that they don't immediately sell property or whatever. It doesn't work like that. You really just have to build your relationships and, um, you know, maybe have a side job just to be able to have some income coming in during that time when you're building your real estate career. So um, there are also startup costs involved. So you do have to take your classes. In Kentucky, it's 96 hours. Then you have to join our board of realtors. Then you have to get your signs and your cards. So, you know, there's certain startup costs involved with getting the business going, but it's the same with any business. Most businesses operate in the red when they're, you know, if you open a brick and mortar store, you're going to have startup costs. So you just yeah. think of it that way. You're, you're going to have startup costs. And if you don't have the startup cost and a little bit of a cushion to start, then you best wait to do that and go, you know, completely cold turkey on all your other jobs before doing so. So, yeah, yeah. 
they just have have a nest egg that you can work off of in case you don't sell a house right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Um, so you talk a little bit about having to sort of build your network and build your base. Um, and I think it's changed so much since you probably were doing your barrettes and, and when you started in real estate. Um, so do you have advice for, you know, those trying to build, even if it's not real estate, they're just trying to build their business or their nonprofit or anything from, from scratch or from nothing? Cause I know you are a social media expert. Um, and so I'm just curious if you have tips for people that are trying to build their business, real estate or otherwise. Sure. Well, I think the key is really just to um, work your your friends and your family with any business. I think those are the people that you can hopefully count on, uh, your friends and your family to support you in your business. And when you do decide to go out on a limb or start a new career, you want their support and um, hopefully they will give it to you or buy your first product or uh, let their friends know that you are in the business. So I think working your friends and family on your um, as your as your close tight circle, then branching out to um, to others, maybe people that you don't know, um, you can put out, tell anybody and everybody what you're doing. So I think that's really how I built my business years and years ago. I literally p gave my card to anyone and everyone. And I put it in my utility bills. I actually met my husband by giving him my card. So it's all about your, your business card and letting everyone know what you do. I think one of the things that my dad like always thinks of you is when you were at the University of Kentucky football game handing out the Whitney Pan or well I think it was Whitney Wiggins at the time um, yes. fans and it was such a hot day and my dad was so I mean that was so impressive because oh, one it was so creative cool. people needed the fans um, oh. but two you were out there doing it, it was I was great. Oh, I did a lot of prospecting when I was starting my business um not so much now because my business is kind of mostly referral based, but early on, you've really got to put all your time and energy into building your, your career. And the, it's funny, um, years later after those fans, I met with a, a client and he was walking me through the house and there was my fan in the closet. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And he didn't even realize, but I think subconsciously, maybe just seeing Whitney panel fan every day for six years, yeah. it may have, you know, it, it hit and, and he looked <laughs> with me and I didn't know the, the couple. I didn't know them at all, but there was the fan that they probably saw every day. And then I was like, that's my fan. And they went, oh my gosh. So, you know, you never know. You never know. That's an Riddle. awesome Thank story. You. Um, Thank you. So related to that, I do feel like you're one of the most creative people I know and um, you're creative in how you advertise and in the content you create. Um, what you. inspires you or gets your sort of creative juices flowing? Well, let's <laughs> see. So years ago, I would do some really fun ads, uh, print ads from just um, parodies on other very popular ads. I think I do a lot of parody. So I'll watch the Super Bowl ads and then do something similar to that as it relates to my, my career, which is real estate. Um, I'll see something just probably just other ads and maybe just change it just a touch to make it more um, relatable to my to my clients. So I think that's probably what I do is just a little bit of tweaking something that's already very popular or trending. Yeah. Um, I don't have enough time to really well, sometimes I'll be creative and think of something. But right now I'm just on like whirlwind mode right now. It's just <laughs> get a few hours of sleep and then wake up and run. I mean, I'm literally just running all the time. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Well, look, this is, this is going to make the next question very funny, Whitney. Um, okay. because you're, you're, you're kind of an empty, your, your daughter went to, to college and your, and your son is out doing his thing. So you're kind of an empty nester. How do you think about are. how to use any extra time you have, Whitney? Well, Rick and I have now started getting into real estate investing, which all these years we've been 
you know, not really buying and selling any homes. So we, uh, one time I had a client and my client's um, financing fell through the day before the closing and he couldn't get it to work. And it was a great little house and a great little deal. And I said, seller, we'll, we'll buy it from you and sell it and, and buy it really quickly. So we did, and we've been flipping that. So in our spare time now, we're uh, basically redoing homes and then turning around and flipping them. Oh my so gosh, we have our first one coming on in Southland in about uh, about a month. So it'll be really fun. And then we bought another one in Chevy Chase that we're probably going to tear down and do something there. So now that's kind of our next stage is, is actually buying and uh, investing in property and redoing it. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, that's super yeah, so that's fun. Kind of fun. So that's in our spare time. I'm running over to our little flip house and picking out faucets <laughs> and picking out quartz and picking out paint colors. So that's that's in my spare time. I'm spending a lot of time, um, you know, at Lowe's and Home Depot and that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I, I bet those are great. That's great. Um, fun. So what do you feel like younger people have figured out when it comes to a professional career? What do you think they figured out? Is that what you Yeah, saying? what do you think they do better than maybe older people? Um, well, or thinking outside, I think, well, no, no. I mean, I think, you know, maybe the older generation has like, this is the way it's supposed to be. Like, for instance, maybe some realtors that have been doing this a long time might not think outside of the box. They might just put the sign in the yard and add in the Herald Leader. I don't do that. I yeah, do a sign. Yeah. I don't do like your typical print ad. It's more, you know, social media. Um, you know, I think, I think maybe old school might just be more by the books and this is the way it's going to be. I'm going to work nine to five. I'm going to my office every day. Whereas, you know, I'm seriously, literally, I work in my car. I mean, this is, this is my office. So my car is my office and, um, you know, my computer, my car. Yeah. Yeah. And my phone. <laughs> and you go and you go. <laughs> and okay. I go, baby. I wanted to share a few funny pictures that you may or may not have uh, ever seen. Um, oh, boy. Let's see. Hold on. Oh, my see. gosh. Let me see, Wendy. Okay, oh, so here yeah. we are with yeah. Kim Copeland and Victoria yep, yep. Gurney and Hillary uh, and Mary. Yeah, um, This time. one, I feel like this was at maybe Catherine's house was it Catherine's house yes it was these are great um, and then these here are like, we are um i think you came to visit me in denver and then we went to the telluride bluegrass festival yes. oh which i know God. i sent you that picture over the summer oh yeah i want to take another one that was, remember we slept in your car wendy and it was i crazy. mean it was so crazy. cold car camping yeah i'll never get over that cold that was so cold but we had so much fun at that show wow <laughs> Look at that. Look and at tell that. And Telluride was beautiful. So I did. I loved so it. Fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was a very fun memory. Wait um, a minute. Okay. Is it blurry? Do you see? Is it? It's kind of turned blurry. Oh, is did it, it turn blurry? Oh, it doesn't look bit. too blurry for me. No? Okay. All right. Well, that's okay. good. You're doing good. You're doing good. Um, we don't have any questions yet. I'll say that. Um, okay, okay. Just uh, a couple other questions. Um, so do you have like a favorite saying or mantra? That's sort of you like. Yes. To, okay. Yes, I do. Um, I like this one. Behind every negative is a powerful positive. Oh, I like so that. So I've always tried to be an optimist, my, something my parents always taught me to, you know, and a lot of times in real estate, things will happen like best friends will list with other agents. Um, you know, someone you've been working with for months might buy for sale by owner, you know, things that you've put your heart and soul into and they literally crush you. <laughs> but um, then you but then something amazing happens when these bad things happen and you're like, wow, this is awesome. It really I just this bad thing happened, but then this good thing happened. So I, that's happened a lot in my life is that I've had you know, some things happen and then something really incredible and good happens. So that's, that's uh, my favorite is behind every negative is a powerful positive. And I've tried to teach that to my kids when they have their disappointments and my husband, we, that's just what we say. We, that's our thing. Yeah. I love that. 
That's great. I like that positive attitude. Um, And do you have a favorite like podcast or blog or book? that you'd want to share? Oh gosh. I try to read like, um, I, I, there is a real estate podcast that I like. It's called massive agent podcast and it Uh talks about our industry and, um, that's a good podcast. So I like, um, I also like, um, Oh, Ashley flowers. And it's, um, 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 just a minute. Crime junkie. I love crime, (laughs) crime junkie. So when I'm driving around and I'm not on the phone, I listen to Crime Junkie and it's a crime. It's true crimes. I love true. Rick and I love true crimes. So it's a great podcast. Oh my God, that's so interesting. Now, is your phone ringing because people accepted your offer? Um, I have not gotten an acceptance yet. Okay. Yes. Just want to make sure you you can maybe share the good news with the the show. No, I did not yet. Um. I have not gotten acceptance yet, but hopefully that'll okay, be. Okay. That'll well, be that's next interesting. Time. So, um, uh, I guess when you are driving in your car a lot, it's nice to have podcasts to be able to yeah. listen. Yeah. To. I just yeah. listen to podcasts, but um, okay, those awesome. are my those are my two. You know, when I do listen, it's it's usually trying to better my my just to stay abreast with our real estate industry that's changing so much every day. So I try to listen to what's going on. Uh, versus reading all the time because I'm I you, I literally spend so much time in my car like yeah six hours a day so eight hours I mean a lot I mean <laughs> this, I mean here I am doing the podcast in my car which I didn't want to do I wanted to be in front of my desk I wanted to have you know be ready but that's how I roll <laughs> it's, it's okay it's okay well um is there any other advice you maybe would want to um uh to to give to people wanting to start their own business or get into real estate or so when someone tells you don't like i remember when i first got into this i was 24 years old and my office manager said oh whitney you don't want to do chevy chase it's oversaturated chevy chase is an area in lexington it's oversaturated with agents so and so specializes in that so and so is the queen of that and i was like no i'm gonna do chevy chase i'm i'm gonna do it and my very first listing was in chevy chase and that's my one of my areas of specialty. So I think if someone tells you no, or there's way too many people doing that, or you'll never be good enough for that, just prove them wrong. I think yeah. I love to prove people wrong. I absolutely love to prove people wrong. <laughs> I remember that I um, listed a house on a street. I was brand new agent and all these older agents that had been in the business for years just were like, whoa, who is this? Who is this person? And I listed... Um, three houses on the street of a well-known agent in town, literally one, two, three, because one begat two. And then that person told them and I was selling them. I was selling them. And the agent said, who are you anyway? And I said, my name is Whitney Wiggins. She goes, I've never heard of you. And I said, you will. So there you go. So prove them wrong. Well, and you're always, I remember you're always like the, number one agent in Kentucky or, I mean, you sell tons of houses. I, d- I do well, know Well, thank you. And I've had a lot of help with my husband. He's really helped now that Rick got in. I mean, literally Rick had a career of 32 years. He'd be a good person, Wendy, to talk to because <laughs> he literally changed his whole career path from being in the competitive swimwear business to selling real estate. So he literally at the age of 50, whatever he was, upper fifties, changed his total career and is now an agent with me and has been a huge help. So um, he's a good example of someone who, you know, just completely went 180 in a different direction and, and loves it. Well, and unfortunately Rick is not a woman and. (laughs) Oh, you're right. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) But he was my swim coach. It'd be fun to, I I think part of why I love this show is because I get to talk to people that I haven't talked to in so long. Um, So it's. it's, Gotcha. So gotcha. he would, he would, he would check up. that box. It is good catching up. Yeah. And he, he said you were one of his favorites. Oh, he? that's so nice. He's one of my favorites, although I hated swim practice at seven in the morning. It was oh, just uh, too cold I'm not and too a, early. I'm not a person either. Yeah. Well, so if people want to get in touch with you, um, I know we're going to put your YouTube channel um, okay. up on my Facebook. I mean, on my LinkedIn post. 
Um, but if people do want to connect with you, is it best to connect with you via LinkedIn or follow you on sure Facebook um or linkedin Instagram, or like what would you what would you prefer? all of it i'm really all i'm all over i like linkedin i like facebook i do instagram uh i do tiktok um twitter i mean clubhouse I, i'm on clubhouse you are i i can mm -hmm. I, i'm trying to decide what i think about clubhouse well I am a bit obsessive compulsive. So I really got into clubhouse and I was listening and I was speaking in rooms and I was doing all this and it was great. But then I was like, Whoa, I don't have time for this. So <laughs> I had to pull back and every once in a while I'll jump in a room. If somebody really interesting is speaking, yeah. um, and I'll listen, but it can get a little overwhelming when you get the large rooms with, um, you know, 50 moderators. So I do love clubhouse. And I think if you have, you know, set your boundaries and listen and, and choose the people that you want to follow. And then when you find that person, be sure and put the bell. The bell will alert you when that person is speaking in a room. Uh. So, so that's, I think Clubhouse is very informative. And um, I've learned a good bit about social media by listening to some of the gurus on uh, Clubhouse. So okay. Clubhouse well. is, is, is great. Um, so they can follow you there too. I guess they can follow me on clubhouse too. <laughs> well, Whitney, I'm going to let you get back to selling Thank houses, you. but I really, really appreciate you taking the time to be on the show and share what you've learned. And, um, uh, yeah, if you. anybody's thinking about getting into career in real estate, have them reach out to me. Cause I'm happy to, to help them give them a little advice and, um, it's important that if they are thinking about getting into real estate, they go with a brokerage, maybe like Keller Williams, that will train them. Training is key because after you pass your exam, after going through 96 hours of real estate classes and passing the exam, it really doesn't prepare you on even how to write an offer to purchase. It just tells you all the legalities of such. So you need to have a brokerage that's going to train you on yeah. the A to Z of being an agent and representing sellers and negotiating that kind of thing. So don't let it, it intimidate you. It, it, it can all be done and just baby steps. And it usually, one more thing I'll add is it literally took me 10 years to get to where I felt like my business was an autopilot. So it was really 10 years of really hard work and building it. But maybe again, that was before the internet, before cell phones. So things are different. It probably shouldn't, it wouldn't take you 10 years, but it, it did take me that long to really, um, to get, get to get uh, where I was, you know, kind of like, oh, this is, you know, starting to, to have a life of its own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's good to sort of set that expectation too. Yeah. Well, Whitney, thank you. I hope you win your You're offers. Welcome. And thank um, you so please much. tell your family sure. hello. I'll be sure and share this. So just tag me on LinkedIn, and then I'll share the interview as well. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you. I hope to see you in person soon. Good for you, Wendy. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.